Hi, I'm Reverend Catherine Gorman Lovelady of Moonstar Lodge in Tiny, Ontario. In response to several uh, comments from friends and family and people who've watched the videos that we have on YouTube, I thought I would comment further on channeling, what that involves, what services we provide, and how that works really in terms of the um, community of spirits, angels, guides, and teachers who work with us. In terms of the training I received, originally I trained in three different perspectives on spirit work. Firstly, I trained in uh, parapsychology while doing a psychology degree in university. That was six years of my life spent learning about the science, the uh, use of electronic equipment, photography, and the experimental parameters around trying to identify and quantify and um, make available uh, spirits that are in our presence. After that I went and studied with the Spiritualist Church for many years. I did mediumship circles with some uh, very excellent uh, spiritualist teachers and learned both mediumship and uh, healing techniques. I then went on through student ministership uh, to become licensed and finally ordained. After that, I transferred my license to um, the Wolf Island Aboriginal Interfaith Church. That suited the needs of the growing um, traditional Aboriginal spiritual community and allowed me to spend uh, another 10 years training with my own community, my First Nations family and uh, Métis brothers and sisters learning and fine-tuning shamanic traditions and spiritual teachings and traditions along with healing. In my own life, nearly 40 years of doing this work, I found that there's really uh, no differentiation, for me at least, between um, art, healing, and communion with spirit. It all seems to work well together. So this is the focus of Moonstar Lodge. When people book an appointment with me to communicate with their guides and teachers, I can do that in uh, a number of ways. I can meet with them in person, uh, if they're close enough to meet with me here in my home. I can also meet with them over the internet using Skype or FaceTime or similar programs that allow me to see them and see the field around them. I don't do telephone work. That doesn't uh, suit me. It never has. It was something that was trained into me uh, many years ago by the spiritualist community. So you won't ever be able to communicate with me. It doesn't work with me by phone. When I meet with people, I ask them for their uh, issues of concern, if they have any particular questions that they wish answered, and if they have any, to certainly uh, ask me up front, um, ahead of the reading, if that helps to fine tune and clarify the direction of the, of the reading. When I open the door to spirit, uh, and you'll find that very many um, mediums work this way, we really don't have a say in who comes through. We can't force particular people to come through, so if you come to visit with me and you want specifically to talk to your mother or your father or your sister or a grandparent, I can ask for them to come through, but many more people in spirit come through. And that's something that's uh, sometimes joyful and unexpected, but it also can be fear-producing in individuals who say, oh, I don't want to hear from my uh, Uncle Jack. He, he perpetrated some sort of crime against me as a child, and I don't want to have that person. I can't stop Uncle Jack from coming through, but I can limit what information I bring from him. 
when people pass into spirit, they don't instantly become perfect. Their personalities begin to change as they grow in spirit if they are pursuing a spiritual walk that increases their vibration. Of that, I can assure you. However, um, I do respect boundaries. So if a person comes for a reading and they're uh, concerned about hearing about death or illness, I don't wish to violate anyone's boundaries. And I certainly respect that uh, people have things that cause them anxiety. So if I hear something from a guide or a teacher, I don't share that if that's your stated wish. That being said, uh, as I've often mentioned in other videos, I cannot close the barn door after the horse gets out. I am not in control of who comes through in spirit. And there are times when messages are meant to be given to us that we weren't expecting. Um, I'm very careful uh, about that and I do try and give you the most complete description. Uh, good mediums don't interpret for an individual. Quite often the information I receive is symbolic in nature. The symbols may not mean anything to me, they might mean something to you. Conversely, I also have, in working with my own guides and teachers over the years, developed, if you will, a lexicon of symbols that um, for me reflect different situations in life. A good medium will be like a great detective. They see as much as they can, they describe as much as they can, as clearly and without bias as possible. It's important for me to give you as much description of a scene I am seeing. Psychics all work differently. There are none better than others. We just work at different vibratory levels. As I've mentioned in other videos, we all have different abilities to connect in the psychic means. Clairvoyance is the ability to see. Sometimes the visions are internal, meaning subjective. Sometimes the visual imagery from spirit is objective or external to us, so that I would appear to see something in my environment. Clairaudience is the ability to hear spirit. Again, that can be inside as if I'm hearing it in my ear or in the room. It's a wonderful experience when spirit speaks and several people in a room can hear that. We use digital recorders and in the old days, back in the 70s when I went to university, we used um, cassette tape to get EVPs and that's a, an objective aspect of clear audience. Clear olfaction is the ability to smell smells in the environment that do not originate from that environment. So flowers in the winter or cigarette smoke in a house of non-smokers. These are signals from spirit. Uh, these often come with noises and sounds, but they don't have to. Psychokinesis is the ability to move objects and a subset of psychokinesis is psychometry, the ability to read objects. Forensic psychometry is the ability to uh, get information from an object belonging to someone to determine what has happened. Forensic psychometry is used, for example, in kidnappings or at accident scenes, this sort of thing. Murder mysteries, if you will, or murder investigations. Clairsentience is the feeling of spirits. This is where there is a temperature change in the room or actual touch. When I was studying, uh, it was three degrees Celsius was the um, guideline. Uh, a temperature change had to either decrease or increase by a minimum of three degrees Celsius in order to be considered as possibly a, a valid clue of spiritual presence. Obviously, temperatures can vary much more wildly than that. 
in my years of doing channeling, I have um, developed connections with a variety of spiritual beings, guides, and teachers. I've been aware of those who have gone into spirit by the act of suicide or by an accident so sudden and so violent they don't realize they're dead. I have worked my way through um, relations, people who are in spirit who are relatives. I've also worked through uh, a series of guides and teachers who've um, connected with me because of uh, similar situations that they've dealt with and by coming through to deal with the person sitting with me it helps to advance them spiritually as well as help the person who's come for a reading. One of the delights of my life and one of the levels of uh, guide and teacher that I've worked with since childhood are angels. Angels have been for me a lifeline to existing on this earth plane my work and love of connecting with angels is uh, extremely important and nothing pleases me more than to be able to communicate angelic presence to an individual who's sitting with me for a reading and to be able to uh, assist the person to learn to work with angels. When I worked in the hospital system um, working in shamanic work I often assisted people in their transition. That's something that um, I really love doing because I can help them with my shamanic training in moving to the other side and doing so peacefully and with grace. Working with spirit in that uh, milieu allows for two paradigms. Working with people who've had near-death experiences and actually go to the other side, but come back, and then also working with people through their transition and then communicating with them after death. That uh, my life has been long enough and uh, my experience deep enough now that it's been a pleasure to have both sets of experiences. I see my life's calling as one of assisting people with their concerns about life after death and what is waiting for us. I strongly believe that we are spiritual beings who happen to have a body. We are limitless and as limitless beings what's happened is in this third dimensional physical body we, we have forgotten what awaits for us on the other side. So helping people come to peace and understanding about what awaits for us, the great love, uh, the dimensions that exist beyond our own, uh, is something that I feel is a focus of my life. Certainly people come with other questions besides the great life mystery questions. They're more concerned about uh, the welfare of their kids or their spouse or people in spirit. They just they want to know, they want to have closure about someone who has passed. And it is a, a great comfort for me to know when I can bring closure to someone who is grieving. I'd like to thank you for taking these few minutes to listen to my thoughts on channeling. Brian and I look forward to uh, having you communicate with us through our website www.moonstarlodge.com. I do have a blog. I'm not an active blogger, but I do talk about uh, the spiritual realm when I have time on my blog. And I uh, am on Facebook and Twitter. So feel free to communicate with me there. Thank you.